Today we're going to be doing a post-platinum review of Pepper Grinder on the PlayStation 5. Now if you are new to the channel here, a post-platinum review is just basically me talking about a game, its trophy list, so all the various trophies you can earn in that game, and more specifically we're talking about the game's platinum trophy. Now I've already done several post-platinum review videos on this channel, so if you have an interest in checking out those videos, I'll leave links to those down below. But today we are specifically talking about Pepper Grinder. And Pepper Grinder sees you playing as Pepper, who uses this massive drill in order to drill through terrain, beat up enemies, in order to get her stolen treasure. Very simple concept, very simple story, but you don't really play this game for the story, you play it for the controls, you play it for the gameplay itself. Now, Pepper Grinder is the definition of an indie game. It was made by one developer. One singular developer made this game. Um, and it's very impressive, I think, when it comes to the art, the controls, everything about the game is just, is just a lot of fun, honestly. And it is a nice brief experience, which is something I really appreciate nowadays, especially. Doesn't really waste your time, doesn't really overstay its welcome. It is a nice, tight, condensed experience that you can beat in under four hours in terms of the main story. But obviously, if you know we're talking about the Platinum Trophy today, and if you are going for the Platinum Trophy, the main thing that is gonna add time to your overall time to completion is gonna be the time trials. So let's actually talk about the Platinum Trophy itself before we go ahead and dive into the individual trophies that make up Pepper Grinder's Platinum Trophy. The trophy list itself is broken up into two separate sections. You've got your main story mode, campaign mode trophies, and then you've got your time trial based trophies. And if you've seen my Mirror's Edge Platinum Trophy uh, video that I did a couple months ago at this point, it's been a while, that was probably one of the hardest Platinum Trophies I've ever taken on because the time trial based trophies were so damn difficult. And I don't think Pepper Grinder ever gets near to or eclipses the difficulty that we see in Mirror's Edge. That Mirror's Edge's Platinum Trophy is way harder than something like this. But if you do not enjoy time trial based Platinum Trophies, or just time trial based games, then maybe stay away because a good chunk, maybe like 60%, not even 60, maybe like 50 or 40% of the trophy list for Pepper Grinder consists of getting gold rankings on all of the time trials. So I do think this is like a way easier platinum trophy in terms of, you know, if you're comparing this to something like Mirror's Edge, Mirror's Edge is way harder. But if you are the kind of person that does not like time trial based trophies or platinums, maybe stay away from this one. Even though I do think it is a little bit easier, or I, th I think it's significantly easier than something like Mirror's Edge. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the game itself. We kind of have an idea of what the trophies are gonna look like. So without further ado, let's actually look at the individual trophies that make up Pepper Grinder's Platinum Trophy. And I hope, you know, my sort of tips and suggestions will give you a better idea on whether or not you wanna go for this Platinum yourself and give the game a shot, which you should, because the game is excellent and I think you should go ahead and support it any way you can. You can buy it physically, that's how I bought it, or you can go and buy it digitally. It's really up to you. All right, everybody, so we are here once again using PSN profiles to take a look at Pepper Grinders trophies. There are 23 in total, and that includes the Platinum Trophy here as well. So a little bit less than, you know, what you're probably used to seeing, about 40 to 50, you know, is kind of the usual range for trophy, trophy lists, right? 23 total, not too bad. And as I kind of mentioned at the top of the video here, you can kind of think of the trophy list as being two distinctive halves. You've got your main campaign trophies, then you've got your time attack trophies. And I think the makeup of the trophy list as a whole, you've got, you know, maybe 40% that are time trial based trophies. And then the other like 60% are more story based trophies. And so I'm going to actually scroll to the very bottom of this trophy list here, because we want to start with the story based trophies first and then go into the time uh, time trial based trophies. Main reason is because you don't get to immediately jump into the time trial based modes, which makes sense, right? Because the only way that you go into the time trial mode is after you've completed a specific level, right? You wanna get a familiarity with the mechanics, the specific level, after you beat the level, then you go back to that same level and do the time trial mode. And just as a note, there are four worlds to this game. Um, so you start, you have your intro world and there's two, three, four and each of those worlds has a boss fight. And you know you also have to speed run the boss fights as well, if I didn't clarify that in the beginning. And so you know it's a pretty short campaign, like I mentioned before, four hours, so not too bad. And then you'll probably spend you know an hour or two, depending on your skill, depending on just like how difficult or easy even a time that you're gonna have 
uh, with the time trials. So you may be looking at anywhere between six to eight hours for the platinum. I think it took me about six and a half hours to get the platinum as well. So generally speaking, that was kind of the range that I fell in. But let's go ahead and look at the story-based trophies first here. We've got Treasure Hunter is the first one here. Complete stage 1-1. One, one. So very simple, right? Just beat the first level of the game. Pretty straightforward. But then you have um, some other trophies here, like unlock the sticker book and defeat the first boss and unlock hidden stage. So I'm just gonna go through these together. Beetle Flipper, right? This one here, defeat the first boss. That is pretty straightforward, right? Like you'll just complete stage one, one, then you'll beat the other levels in the first world and eventually you'll get to the first boss. I think there's like three or four levels in the first world. So not too many, um, but you'll naturally get Beetle Flipper, right? Just playing the game. And the same thing goes with New Hobby. Now, New Hobby, unlock the sticker book. The sticker book, you can unlock it in the first world. You're gonna come to, after you beat world one, or after you complete stage one, one, you're gonna basically have this path that splits out. You can go to the next level, you can go to one, two, or you can go to the shop. And when you go to the shop, you're gonna see a merchant there. You can buy a bunch of different things from them. You can buy different cosmetics for your character. You can buy different like hair colors and scarf colors. You can also buy golden keys. And you can actually use those keys to unlock hidden stages, which ties into a path less traveled, which we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but basically when you go to the shop, you can see that there's a merchant there and you can buy sticker the sticker book from the first world and you can also in subsequent worlds and subsequent you know worlds like two three four you can buy pages of the sticker book you'll naturally get this while going to you know 100 complete the game but just make note of it when you're in the shop for the first time that you can actually use these um essentially there are these gold skull collectible coins that are hidden in every single uh, world or every single level of the game and so you know much like uh, the moons in Mario right like the, the the moons that you can find in hidden areas of the world same thing um, you'll just collect these golden uh, skull coins throughout each level and then I think you need 10 to unlock the golden keys then you need maybe like two or three to unlock the sticker book and subsequent pages for the sticker book so new hobby is really something that you'll just get playing the game naturally and coming across the various shops of the game and that also ties into a path less traveled where you have to unlock hidden stage or one hidden stage to get the bronze trophy here. Now the thing is, right, like for each shop in the game, since there are four worlds, you'll have four shops that you can go to. For each of the four shops, you'll see that you can purchase a golden key for I think 10 coins. And again, the coins are something that you just find in the world or in the, in the level that you're on and they're just hidden. So all you need is 10 of those coins, those hidden coins in order to get the key. And then when you go back to the world map, for that specific world that you're in, the path for, or the level, the hidden level will get unlocked because you purchased the key. So again, not too much that you really need to do for path less traveled. You'll kind of just get this naturally as you're unlocking things in the shop. Now, if we move on to something like Garden Shakedown, where you have to find a Mandragora and take its money, this actually ties into those golden uh, skull coins that you can kind of find hidden throughout each level. As you're kind of naturally going and exploring and trying to find all the skull coins, because you'll need to find all the skull coins for another trophy on this list. But as you're kind of doing that naturally, um, you'll see sort of like this turnip looking uh, creature buried into uh, the ground. And if you drill up into that, you know, sort of like sprout thing, like this little creature guy, he'll pop out and basically start just dropping a bunch of coins and, and, and treasure and stuff like that. So it's one of those things where Garden Shakedown, you're just gonna get it trying to find all of the golden skull coins in the game, which again, you need to collect all of the golden skull coins in the game for another trophy. But Garden Shakedown, you'll just kind of get this naturally. The next two trophies, Make a Friend here and a Dash of Pepper, these two silver trophies. These are actually, you can get this in the same level, which is interesting. These are the only two level specific trophies. There are no other like level specific trophies that you'll come across while playing this game. It's mainly just these two. And like I said, they're the same level and you can get this in World 2. It's one of the levels in World 2. Uh, it's the level where you'll get this sort of like, uh, not to spoil things, but you'll get this new uh, item that you can use to beat up enemies and sort of traverse through the level. And after you get that item, you'll see these like little swinging uh, cauldrons full of soup. And you can just jump in one of those cauldrons to get the Dash of Pepper trophy. You literally just have to jump inside of the, the big cauldron. You'll get that trophy. And then a few uh, instances later, Pretty much like right after you get this Adash of Pepper trophy, you're gonna come across um, this section of the level where you'll see a pumpkin. All you have to do is just drill 
through the pumpkin and uh, keep doing that until a face forms, like a jack o' lantern, you know, like a face forms in that pumpkin. And then you'll get the make a friend trophy. So make a friend, Dasher Pepper in the same level in world two and very, very, very hard to miss, especially, you know, if you're doing all your time trial modes, you'll, you'll definitely easily get these two, no problem. And these are both silver, which is pretty cool. Alrighty, next year we've got these three here. These are all boss specific trophies. So defeat the second boss, defeat the third boss, defeat the final boss. And the final boss actually has two stages that are really cool. Uh, I really love the final boss. I think it's a really fun time. But again, these are all just campaign story related trophies. Just beat the game naturally, play all the levels, right? Complete all the boss fights. You'll get these three trophies pretty easily. And again, that's two silver and one gold. So it's really not too crazy. I love when games nail the boss fights. And I think Pepper Grinder just has some really memorable boss fights. So these three trophies, not too hard. And they're actually pretty great uh, overall. All right, continuing on with, again, more story campaign related trophies here. We've got these three coming up. We've got dedicated explorer where you unlock all hidden stages. And again, as we've talked about, there are going to be four shops in the game because there are four worlds in this game so for each shop you'll be able to purchase these golden coins so there's four hidden stages total you need four or so you need four uh keys to unlock each of the hidden stages and i think it's about 10 hidden skull coins per key so it's basically you need 40 uh skull coins right and this kind of ties into skull hunter here collect all skull coins so either way right you have to get all the skull coins for this skull hunter trophy and you'll use all those gold skull coins to get the dedicated explorer trophy. And I love this trophy list because everything naturally ties into each other. Like there's no erroneous random trophy that you have to go and grind out. You know, the only like random level specific trophies are make a friend and a dash of pepper. But those are like the only two that are again, level specific. Everything else feeds into itself. And then even sticker book world tour where you have to unlock all the sticker book pages, same thing completely ties into the main story, ties into all the other trophies that you have to go ahead and get naturally playing the game. And just to kind of touch on the sticker book world tour trophy to unlock all the sticker book pages, but generally speaking, all you gotta do is just go to the merchant and he'll sell you additional sticker book pages for like two or three skull coins. So not too crazy. You'll easily kind of get the sticker book world tour first, I think, as opposed to something like Skull Hunter, because you'll need 40 coins overall versus I think, you know, maybe like half that for just the sticker book world tour trophy here. But now let's actually talk about the time trial based trophies because we pretty much hit up all of the campaign trophies, which I think are very straightforward. We don't really have to spend too much time in detail on those. But now we're going to go to the time trial based trophies and let's start off with, well, all of the sticker based trophies here. So as you can see, right, we've got a series one collector trophy, series two, series three, four and series uh, special series collector, sorry about that. And the way that you get the sticker collector trophies, right, where you have to collect all series one stickers or series two, three, and four, basically all the series tie into the worlds of the game, right? There's four worlds in the game and there's four series sets that you can collect. And the way that you get the stickers is, you know, you can purchase the stickers from the, sh the shop, from the vendor uh, in the game but there's only a finite number that you can unlock just by spending money on the stickers specifically. So basically when you go to the merchant, you can buy a handful of stickers for each of the worlds of the game, right? If you're in, world, in, if you're in world one, you can buy, you know, 10 or what five stickers. And then the remaining five you have to get is just by getting the gold time trial mode for each uh, level in world one. So there's only so much that you can unlock naturally just like playing the game and buying things at the shop but in order to get all of the remaining stickers in the game for series one two three and four in the special sticker series you have to get gold ratings on every single level in the game in the time trial mode so there really is no avoiding the time trial mode right like these what is this five trophies here these four silver and one gold these are all specific to not only just beating the story mode or not only just, you know, buying items from the shop, but you also have to get gold on all the time trials. So there really is, this is kind of when we start to see how everything is tightly coupled together. Like you can beat the story and get a bunch of trophies, but now you also have to do, you know, you have to get the gold rating for every single level in the game for the time trials, right? But now let's actually take a look at the time trial specific trophies here, right? And these are all specific to getting gold 
on every single level in the game when it comes to the time trial mode. So you've got fast cash here, treasure rush, speed strats, and done quick. And as each of the trophy descriptions sort of mentioned, you have to get gold medal time attack records for every stage of either world one, world two, three, and four. And this does include the boss fight. So you will have to speed run the boss fights and get gold on those in order to get the special stickers uh, for the special sticker series and also for sticker series one, two, three, and four. So again, all very, very tightly coupled together. These four speedrun specific trophies tie into these five sticker collector series trophies. So really, again, all you're mainly trying to do here, complete the campaign, start to finish, enjoy the game. It is a very fun game, but just go through it naturally, have a great time with it, and then work your way through all the time trial modes, getting, making sure to try and at least get gold on every single level the first time. There were a couple levels that kind of aggravated me a little bit too much, and so I took a break from those specific levels, and then I went to maybe do like the boss fights and try and speed around those. So it really is up to you. It's free form. You can kind of play whatever you need to play, first and if you're finding difficulties with that specific level just move on to something else and maybe it'll be a little bit easier for you and even though there's no like difficulty mode to this game there's no like you know change you can't really change the difficulty of this game what i will recommend you do if you are struggling with a specific time trial level is you can actually go to the shops in the game the merchants will sell you these like extra health pickups that you can purchase and essentially you can double your health so instead of taking four hits, you can double it to taking eight hits. And what I used to do uh, for some of the trickier levels of the game, I would just buy more health, intentionally take damage so I can bypass the harder sections of that level. And it would greatly reduce the overall time that it would take me to complete that specific level. But yeah, guys, overall, I would say, you know, again, not too crazy. And it's way easier to do this than something like the Mirror's Edge speedrunning trophies. Like it, it'll take some time. There will be some frustrating points for sure. It is not a walk in the park. You'll definitely need to memorize placement of enemies. You'll need to memorize just the layout of each level, but it's really not too crazy because most levels can be completed in under three minutes. Like they're pretty short levels. And you know, if, again, if you do all the campaign missions, all of the speed running based trophies, that will net you the Killer Driller Platinum Trophy where you complete 100% of the game. And overall, I would just kind of briefly talk about my experience with the Platinum. And this was a very fun uh, and achievable, it's very achievable. Uh, it is difficult to some degree. I think your mileage is gonna vary in terms of how difficult or easy you find this trophy, this platinum trophy to be. For me, I'd say it sits right in the middle, like a five out of 10. It's challenging in certain areas and then it's also pretty easy in certain areas. Like I feel like there were certain levels, certain time trial levels that gave me, you know, 10, 15, seconds of extra time that I that I didn't need and then there were certain levels that I was just scraping by and getting like maybe one or two seconds away from the cutoff point for like silver to gold and gold to silver so but I would say you know difficulty wise for me it sits right in the middle it's not too easy it's not too hard but in terms of overall enjoyment did I enjoy getting the platinum trophy for this game 100% this is like a 10 out of 10 in terms of trophy list itself because everything in the trophy list feeds into itself like you know, you've got all of your basic level completion trophies. You've got some basic boss fight trophies. Then you also have stuff like Skull Collector, get all the Skull Coins. Well, you need all the Skull Coins to unlock all the hidden stages, right? Everything feeds into itself. It's an organic trophy list. There's nothing crazy or just difficult for the sake of being difficult. Like everything here just feels right. So would I recommend you check out this game? Yes. Would I recommend you check out the Platinum Trophy or at least try to get the Platinum Trophy? 100%. Alrighty guys, so I really appreciate you sticking around to the very end to take a look at all of the trophies that make up Pepper Grinder's Platinum Trophy. If you do want to see more stuff like this, then maybe consider subscribing. And if you want to take a look at any of my other post-Platinum review videos, I will leave links to those down below so you can go ahead and check those out. The most recent one I did was for Stellar Blade, which I also highly recommend you check out and try to get the Platinum for because it's a very good time. But thank you all again so, so much for the support and I will see you all on the next video.